Hi, I'm David Lawrence, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to properly put on and take off a prosthetic limb, a process known as donning and doffing. Okay, now we're going to talk about liners, suspension, and sockets. Most patients these days are going to be given some sort of roll-on liner. There are still some suction fits out there, but that's becoming more rare. With a liner like this, it rolls on to the body, um, which we'll show you with actual patient fitting. But you basically are going to use a pin system like this into a socket, and you're going to create a connection. That's going to be an audible connection, which is really beneficial for the patient to know that I'm in there, I'm locked in, to know how deep I'm in. But the big question I often get is, how far should I be in? How many clicks? How do I know where I'm at? Well, the best way to do it is to put your liner or put a liner on your arm or on your hand, slide in and engage the, the mechanism till you hear it click. As it clicks, you just keep going down one click at a time until the device goes all the way in. Sometimes you're gonna get two or three at a time. You just gotta count those. You get down to 11, 12 clicks, that means you're on the bottom. The patient needs to know that they should, if they're at 12 clicks, that means they're bottomed out. They probably need to have a little more sock on. If they've only got about six clicks, that means they really don't have, uh, they have too many socks on, they're not getting in far enough. Somewhere in the range of 11, 10, 11, maybe 9, 10, 11 clicks is going to be about right in most sockets. And that gives a patient a start point to know whether they need to add socks or not to a pin suspension system. Now, with a very similar type of liner, you can add a lanyard strap. This is much more common with an above the knee or transfemoral amputation. With a transtibial amputation, you basically are going to have a fixed tibia with not a lot of soft tissue around it that's going to lock well into the bottom of the socket and not have to be pulled in. However, when you're dealing with an above the knee socket, you have a lot of more soft tissue around a single bone tucked deeper into the soft tissue. So oftentimes what happens if you try to push into a pin system, you get a bit of an ice cream cone effect, pushing the residual limb up over the top. Lanyard systems work better because what you're gonna do with a lanyard system is take this strap and run it down through a small hole that the process will place in the base of the socket. Once you get the lanyard into the strap, you're basically just pulling it through. And then you can see how then you can draw the residual limb down into the socket instead of it being pushed up over. Once you pull it down through, you're going to pull the strap up, run it through the D-ring, and wrap it back over and Velcro it to itself. Now the key with these when you put them on is you always pull the strap tension from here and then just run it through the ring and re-strap it. You don't want to pull on this D-ring as your linch point because it's very easy to pull this rivet out or pull the D-ring apart. But that locks that individual down into the socket so there's no way that it can come off. Okay, the next form is a seal-in system. This is using the same kind of gas, the same type of a liner material, but you'll notice there's no pin or lanyard, nothing that's going to attach them to the bottom of the socket or hang it from the base of the socket. This is going to create a system in which you're trying to bring the attachment point more broad all the way around and higher up into the socket. What you do with the seal in is you put a hand sanitizer all the way around it to get it well lubricated, put a little bit of hand sanitizer down into the socket as well, and slide these two together. While it's still wet, you want to be pressing all the way down in. This is a one-way valve, so air will come out but can't go back in. You can press on this valve to make sure you're getting all the way down in. And then you give it no more than 30 seconds, 45 seconds, and the Purell will dry. Once it dries, you are sealed in. If you're worrying or wondering how deep they are in the socket, you can take this valve out and check to make sure that the residual limb is right there or filling the base of the socket. You never want an air pocket at the bottom end of any of these sockets because you create a pressure, a negative pressure, which creates almost like a hickey effect on the skin. So you put this back in place, you're sealed in or locked in place. 
Last system I want to talk about is if you are using a non-seal-in type system, or if you're just having a basic what we call a vacuum or elevated vacuum system. With that, you're gonna need a liner. This is basically the same type of, or sleeve, I should say, excuse me, same type of material as made of the liner, but this is a sleeve that goes over the socket. So in this particular case, you would put this over top of the socket and get a good seal to the socket itself, and then the liner will run up the leg. Now the key is how much and where does the liner need to go to? Well, what you're gonna have in a socket like this is a liner here on the inside, with socks that are gonna come a certain amount of height above the socket. You want your sleeve to come up at least, what well, I like to say four fingers, higher than the top of the socks. That means there's at least that much area of the liner um, connecting, excuse me, the sleeve, the sleeve connecting to your skin. If there's not enough, you can lose your vacuum, use your connection, and the device can come off. So you want as much contact on the skin as you possibly can get. So the liners fit into the socket, and we looked at the suspension systems in various ways. But it's important to get a general sense of sockets themselves. Below the knee or transtibial sockets uh, tend to be a, a design in which you're gonna bear some weight on the patellar tendon, but most as much as possible in total contact or pressure all the way around the residual limb. Remember, you have a fairly bony structure below the knee, which means there's not a lot of soft tissue. So the socket's gonna have to be developed to create relief in the right area so we don't get too much pressure, like on the fibular head. Um, and there's enough room for you to slide down into the socket completely. Uh, there can be different types of ways to suspend it, but most of your systems are gonna involve some sort of level of either suspension right at the knee or they can bring the socket up a little bit higher than the knee to get a little bit more suspension around it, based on the process you're working with and your individual needs. When you're talking above the knee sockets, this is probably your most common socket design now, really called your narrow ML or ischial containment socket. This is the type of socket in which your ischial tuberosity or your sit bone should sit right here on a shelf inside the socket. Right, so it has a place for it to sit right here or be cupped is probably the best word. And you've locked them ischial wise into the socket. That distributes force all the way down through the socket, but there's a bony landmark on the top. Now there are older sockets, um, which are a quadrilateral socket where there's actually a seat for the ischial tuberosity. So you don't have to sit down into it. And very modern or more new sockets out there, the Moss socket is one that has a different form of suspension all the way to the top or support for the skeletal structure. And then the issue is now you hear a lot with what's called brimless sockets. We have elevated vacuum to hold the patient into the socket and there's no brim whatsoever. What's the benefit of that? The benefit is that when you sit, uh, there's nothing to sit on. There's no socket back here to be uncomfortable. So you have a lot less pressure uh, in that area. The negative is trying to get a suspension that if you're gonna be an active individual, the prosthetic's not going to rotate on you or spin or stay consistently bearing load. If you can have the issue of containment, you actually get a better distribution of load directly to the skeletal system, not going through soft tissue, which is the way you're designed on the sound side of having that bone structure to the ground. All right, now we're gonna be talking about fitting the below the knee or transtibial uh, amputation and with a transtibial or below the knee socket. In this particular system, we're gonna use a liner uh, system with a sleeve over the top of a socket. So to get started, what you want to do is roll this liner all the way out, right? So there's no wrinkles and no gap here at the bottom. Really important on these issues as well is the hygiene of these liners. You want to clean them every day. It is very easy to get a contact dermatitis from these. And you want to clean the inside. Don't get the outside wet. If you get this nylon material wet, it'll smell and it will stay pretty smelly. So if you wash it right in the sink like I'm holding it now, let it rinse off completely. Mild soap, no deodorant, uh, no... Um, smells or perfumes or anything like that, lemon fresh, just the most simple of, of soaps. Turn it inside out, hang it on a stand or lay it out, but don't ever lay it down 
with this inside material touching. Anything that it touches, cat hair, dog hair, uh, newsprint off of newspaper, everything will be picked up. And then that will be a problem with putting it into the limb when you put it on or push it in into your skin. So you turn this all the way inside out, make sure that there's no air gap. You're gonna put it right on the end of the residual limb. You just, notice I'm using the flats of my hands, not grabbing with my fingertips. And I'm just sliding my hands towards her. As I do that, the, the device or the, the sleeve basically wants to pull itself on. This one has some wear, so it's gonna roll on easier. A new one, you have to put a little bit more effort in to get it to roll all the way up. At that point in time, you just wanna make sure there's no wrinkles and no air pockets from top to bottom. And the thicker side of the liner should always be in the top and the thin on the back side. That means it'll bend easier without pinching behind the knee. If the patient needs socks, and in Carol's case, we need that. So we're gonna put a sock over the top. With socks, it's important to realize these are lycra-based. So this is a three-ply sock, but if you yank it hard enough, you can turn it into a one-ply sock. So you want to keep it a full three-ply sock by pulling the wrinkles out, but not stretching or yanking on it. That way it gets the sleeve solid with a sock over top of it with no wrinkles. The next issue becomes the sleeve over top. This is the liner, the sock, and now the sleeve. With the sleeve, what we want to do is we want to put it into a position where it has plenty of contact on the socket. That means it's well connected on the socket and plenty of material to maintain position and create that vacuum or seal to the skin. You roll the outside down, and when you roll it down, you always want to roll it down past the back wall of the prosthetic socket. If not, that will pinch or catch on the way on, and then you may lose suspension or be just very uncomfortable as well. From this point, we take our socket and simply slide it into place with the kneecap sitting right in the center of the groove. So bend your knee a little bit, Carol, there you go. And that kneecap should sit in the middle there. I don't wanna put that on on an angle in any way. That's gonna be uncomfortable, directly in the center of the groove. Now with a new patient with a lot more soft tissue and more swelling, you have to take your time a little bit to work the socket into place because it will hold and maybe hang up somewhat. Once she's in there in that position, you're basically going to do the same idea, the flats of your hands to, to slide the, the liner up onto the residual limb. Now, here we have a little bit of the liner underneath catching. And what can help that is ask your prosthetist to put a little bit of prosthetic tape right around the top by base of the liner to hold it down, and then it won't adhere or stick to the liner as you're rolling it up. So we get this position, we roll it right to the top. Now you'll notice here that I stopped rolling it up right at the top of her um, liner internally. So as I pull this sleeve up, I wanna make sure when I get to that point, I have about, again, four fingers of width for this liner to make good contact, or sleeve, excuse me, good contact with the skin. So at that point, I'm just gonna roll that up, make good contact with the skin, and bring it all the way Now, at this point in time, you notice that there's no wrinkles all the way down, and tension-wise, that is locked onto her residual limb and all the way down. And she can bend it right into position, but that gives it a good stable base. All right, now we're fitting the baloney amputee or transtibial amputation with a silicone suspension system and a pin. That means we have a roll-on sleeve that has a pin that engages audibly down into the bottom of the socket. This is helpful for patients to know how deep they are. They can count the clicks and determine the depth they are down into the socket. With a system like this, much like any other uh, um, liner suspension, you want to roll it inside out. You always want to keep this very clean, top to bottom, uh, and make sure, again, when you clean it, you don't get the uh, nylon side wet or it will smell. Usually come in here, grab the pin, hold that under the water. You can rinse it really good inside out to dry it. Don't ever lay it down like this. If you're gonna lay it down anywhere, roll it back right side out. At this point in time, our key is that we have to have the pin become an extension of her, the bone of her leg. So if you put that on in a position too low, and you start to roll up, you're gonna see that pin is not facing directly out from the end of her leg. It is not gonna engage well in the housing. 
This is, sounds simple, but it's a difficult thing for patients to always get that pin right. So what you're gonna do is put that and try and get that pin as a direct extension of the bottom of the leg. And again, using the flats of the hands, not the fingertips, just slide that liner all the way up. If we have a good position, we have the pin coming directly off of the end of the limb. Before you put any socks on, is a good time to check and see if you generally have it right. If you do, you can hear those clicks. It is clicked into place, that means we do have the sleeve in the right position. Once you put the socks on that she normally needs to be able to walk, it's gonna be harder to get it to engage. So a good way to check your alignment is just slide it on first. She uses a five ply sock. Remember with our socks, they can come in one, three, five, two ply, whatever. This basically stands for five one ply sock. So it is a thicker sock that has a hole in the bottom. Now, why is that important? Because if you put this prosthetic on with the pin pulling through sock like this, it will sometimes go down in and engage, but it will not come off. At that point, you become locked into the socket. You have to contact the prosthetist to have the prosthetic device taken apart from underneath to get out of the socket. So it's really important to make sure that if you put a sock on over top of a pin suspension, that the pin clearly and completely is free from the bottom of the pin. Now, in an absolute, difficult you know, situation where you can't get to that prosthetic limb maker, what you can do, and it is possible, that if you can take warm water and pour enough warm water down inside this liner and you get enough water in there, you can slide it off. It's like being extremely sweaty all the way around. It takes a lot of water, a lot of patience, and a lot of time. So uh, and that way you can get it off without having to get the pin uh, disengaged from the sock. But to never make that mistake is the best way, and to make sure you always have the patient come down, put their hand down, and just check to make sure they feel that pin is completely free from the sock, nothing to get caught up in the housing. From there, we don't have any external sleeve at this point in time. All the suspension is gonna come from within the socket. So in this position, we're here. Kneecap should be in the center of the horseshoe in the front. Relax that knee a little bit. Most patients want to stiffen the knee up and become real stiff and tight. That causes the leg to expand. And then it becomes a bit of a Chinese finger torture. The harder you press, the more it does not want to engage. But if you can get them to relax that leg a little bit, let it bend a little bit, then we can get it down. And you can hear that engagement. That's starting to click in. There's a click. So now she's engaged. One click means it's not coming off. You can pull, it's not coming off and the rest of it can come from pressing in or when she stands up to click in the rest of the way. So here we let that knee bend a little bit, try to be relaxed, and give a little more press to get down into the socket. If she's doing that herself, she's gonna bend her knee, she can put her hands, and go ahead and do it, Carol, as far as pressing down in. There we go. So then that's down in and clicked into position and she's locked in. If she got up and started walking around, this leg would click in a, a, a click or two deeper, and that would be at the base, is a fairly short pin system. Now, the big key then is she is locked in, how does she get out of it? At that point in time, on the inside wall, there's gonna be a button. Sometimes there's a cosmetic cover where you have to feel for that opening, but on this one, you can see the opening. All Carol has to do is press on that button and lift her leg up, and the pin comes directly out. All right, um, a hybrid system that's available is a system in which you use a pin suspension on a sleeve, and you combine that with a system that allows you to ratchet down and tighten up the socket all the way around from both sides and from the back. So um, how this works is you're gonna put this guy on, bend the knee there for me, Percy, there you go, and we're gonna slide in till you hear the clicking. That's engaging that prosthetic down in. However, one, the additional component here, which is nice, is the individual then can engage this strap and tighten up these windows to adjust the fit based on more or less swelling and getting the fit right where they want it for that particular given time. 
when we're fitting the above the knee or transfemoral uh, patient with a lanyard system, that's basically a liner that has in, in the, a strap that is a Velcro-based lanyard strap that will attach and hold suspension from below the socket. So how you put this on, you'll notice that the, the prosthetist has cut it lower on the inside than the outside. That should be the groin side. You want to turn the uh, liner completely inside out and completely flush at the bottom. Remember, there can be no air pocket here at the bottom. If you put this on with an air pocket, you create a hickey effect at the bottom. You can create a lot of skin damage. So you always want to flush it all the way out, either if the therapist is doing this or the patient. You make sure that that lower side, it's cut up higher, I should say, is on the inside. Stick this right on the end of the residual limb, flush to it, and again, roll it up. What you're looking for is simply keeping your hands flush. Don't grab it with your fingernails. You can cut holes in the liner. Just kind of use the flat of your hand to slide it up the leg. It's going to want to work its way up there. When they're new, they're a little bit stiffer and don't roll it quite as easily. But once we get up about this far, Percy, go ahead and help me out and pull sure. that guy all the way up around. Yes, sir. There you go, and you have to kind of lift up to get it to clear the base, and then pull the shorts out so that you know it got everything caught up in the socket. There we go, and bring it around the front. Now, we've got our lanyard strap. We want to unhook that lanyard strap. We're going to take our prosthesis at this point in time, and you'll notice in this prosthetic we have socks. That means if the patient has got a fit that needs a sock, you need a particular sock that has a hole built in the bottom of it. What you're gonna do is take that sock, put your lanyard strap through it here, and pull it up flush. Percy, if you grab and pull that sure. sock up flush, that'd be great. And we get that level. And you pull it all the way to the top because you want your socks to come up over the brim of the socket. That also keeps some of the plastic from rubbing on your skin and also keeps any wrinkles out of the socket or the liner. From that point, the lanyard strap goes down through a hole that the process is cut in the bottom of the socket. Again, you do this yourself. Uh, as a patient, you're looking down through and pulling the, the leg through that, or the lanyard through that hole. You're gonna pull that leg up as best you can into position. And it doesn't have to be on perfectly, just close. And so you get to a position where you pull up the best you can, give it a little tug down. And at this point in time, that thing is not on all the way, but it is on solid. You could really drag someone across the clinic floor with it in this position. You don't need to do that. Now, what you're gonna do is bring up the, a walker in a position here. So the patient's in a stable position. I'm gonna let you personally go ahead and stand up when you're ready. There you go. And lean forward into it. Beautiful. From that position, he just brings the prosthetic back and settles his weight down into it. I'm going to adjust, and he can do the same with just socks and liner, pull the shorts out a little bit. But you'll notice what's happening here is this lanyard strap will start to become a little bit loose. So you grab that lanyard strap and give it a bit of a tug down, and that pulls you in a little bit tighter. Notice when you pull in the lanyard strap, you pull from the bottom of the strap, you don't pull from the D-ring, this ring up on the top, because you'll pull the rivet right off it. You always pull from the bottom, come through the D-ring, and take up the slack. Now, that makes a good, solid fit. Now, Percy, show them how you would do that yourself, if you All adjust right. that strap. You basically, we're in terms... There you go, right there, just showing them how it's done. Just there you go. Down. Here you go, notice how he's balancing with one hand, using one hand to pull it through, taking up the slack, and he's got a good solid fit. From there, the shorts come out, and he's in a stable position. All right, what we're doing here is fitting the above knee socket um, with a seal-in system. That's a system that has a roll-on sleeve and a gasket built into it. The gasket will seal to the prosthetic socket, and that gives us our suspension. There's no need for a strap or pin in this type of system. When you're donning a liner, it's really important that you turn that liner all the way inside out to start with. And you're not gonna come down and leave any space. You wanna pull it all the way inside out until it flattens out completely. 
At the second point, you're going to look and see that it's been cut by the process lower on one side than on the other. So you want to make sure that is going to go into the groin side. So you flush this out completely. You're going to put that right on the end, bring it down a little bit, right on the end of the residual limb. And basically, as you come up, it's going to want to drag itself or pull itself up the leg. And that's all you're doing is you're pulling that and sliding up. To the patient, it's the same way. Notice I'm not using my fingertips and yanking on it. I'm basically just using the flat of my hand and letting it roll up. Very large shorts are helpful in this area so that you have room to work. And we'll pull it all the way up. So Percy, if you want to go ahead and help me pull it out all the way up into place. And a lot of times with the chair, you have to kind of lift up a little bit to get the base all the way underneath and bring it all the way around. Go ahead and bring your leg all the way down. There we go, and we flush it all the way out. That way we know the socket's gonna sit right in the right position. Perfect. Now the gasket here can turn inside out, and if the patient needs, you need special socks. These are socks with a wide open end, and what you're gonna do with this sock is put it over top of the liner, come above the gasket, here, but pull the base of the sock right down to the liner or the gasket and pull it over top. This holds the sock down in place and then we would roll the sock all the way up flush before putting the prosthetic on. In this particular case, the patient doesn't need this, so I'm gonna take it off, but just showing you how that works. And we'll take this off and set it aside. Now, when the gasket is in place, it's lying flush and flat in this direction. And what you need is some sort of uh, sanitary moisturizing stuff, uh, Purell or whatever the version you need or have is fine. And you want to get the gasket fully damp, all right? Any excess on your hand, you wanna go ahead and wipe in the socket so that it will slide down in. If not, it's going in here. Then you have a fairly time sensitive. You want to go ahead and get the socket into place and begin to slide it. Don't stand uh -oh. up. We're just going to slide it into place right. the best we can to begin to get that pressure down in there. Excellent. And when we got it in that far, and that's far enough to get a basic seal, you can bring a walker around, whatever the patient needs, and go ahead and stand up for me, Percy. Right. It comes right down into it. There you go. And loads it, puts the pressure right down on it. Now it's a one-way valve. That means it's going to start expelling air immediately. But if you press on that valve, you'll also get more pressure uh, and more air coming out. So what patient does is go ahead and show them what you do, Percy. You put the pressure on the sock. There you go, on the socket. Press on it and press down into it. And you'll literally hear the air coming out of it. And you want to do that, you want to evacuate all the air out of the base of the socket until the residual limb is sitting flush down into the base of the socket. Many times, once he does this a little bit, he may have to walk a few steps, get around, and then try that again until it settles all the way down in tight. So he's got a very snug fit, and that's what you want, to have a good solid fit moving forward. From there, you just make sure shorts are pulled out from the socket because they on many times will hang up and give him room to be in a good, stable position. Thanks for watching, and we hope that you found this information helpful. This video is part of a series on prosthetic rehabilitation, ranging from managing the residual limb after amputation and progressing to running with a prosthesis. We encourage you to view our other videos in this series and to share them as well. You can find them on our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash missiongate. To stay up to date on our latest content, Click the link in the corner to subscribe and be sure to like and share this video.